What's up everybody, welcome to Money Management Channel. My name is Andrei and today I'm gonna to be doing an update on MMTLP and FINRA Saga. And for today's video guys, I have an amazing news. We have another recall lawsuit that will be filed within the next several days. And this uh, recall lawsuit will challenge not only the fact of illegal activity on the market, but it will challenge the existence, uh, the very existence of FINRA. So, and uh, before we dive deep into all of this, guys, please hit the like button for YouTube algorithm and drop me a line in the comment section if you think my videos are valuable for you. So, let's start with this news. John Burda reposted the tweet that was published uh, by James uh, defrauded by FINRA. And James wrote, Scott Todd is preparing a RICO lawsuit over the MMTLP U3 halt and is demanding uh, the blue sheets for all 105 broker dealers. Citing a recent Scottish ruling, he wrote, My forthcoming litigation will ultimately challenge the very existence of FINA as a self-regulatory organization. And uh, James added uh, this uh, picture that was uh, made uh, definitely with the help of AI. And it says, uh, Battle of the Century, MMTLP Warrior Scott Roth vs. FINRA. And FINRA, as you can see right here, is the most biggest and the toughest guy. And I have to say that, uh, in, my opinion, in my opinion, FINRA is not this person. Because uh, FINRA is hiding behind the wall of uh, their total immunity. And uh, definitely, in my opinion, FINRA is tiny, tiny uh, coward that uh, is trying uh, to... Uh, uh, say that they are working hard in order to help people, but they do nothing. And guys, take a look on uh, the Scott Droth's uh, uh, recent uh, tweet that he published in regards uh, to this uh, news. And guys, for those of you who don't know, let me just uh, give you a two cents. Uh, let me introduce Scott Droth uh, to you. Just recently, uh, just a couple of uh, three weeks ago, he wrote uh, this letter that was addressed to president of Charles Schwab, where he pretty much exposes uh, the Charles Schwab activity in regards to MMTLP case, and he exposes uh, uh, the fact that uh, Charles Schwab and all the broker dealers asked for the U3 halt in order to preserve their capitals. So, and uh, let me again show you this tweet. Scott Trott wrote this. Uh, U.S. District Court Vermont hostilities begin against uh, FINRA FRCP27 safety blitz for the blue sheets held by Sam Dreddy on or about December the 5th of 2022 regarding MMTLP. Looper Bright Enterprise vs. Raymond. First, salvo regarding FINRA having no U.S. law or legislative intent from Congress to ban release of fraud evidence and throttle transparency. 19 of July of 2024 compliance date target. The full lawsuit uh, gets filed early next week, but the shot was there in uh, FRCP 27, so I took uh, it today because I'm close to filing everything. Lack of compliance in this will give me an early evidentiary hearing to force the release of blue sheets or more. Do what you can with what you have, where you are. And guys, we have a deadline, but uh, I will let me show you first of all uh, the letter itself. And I don't want to quote you this entire letter. Let me quote you just several paragraphs. So uh, this uh, uh, this is uh, the letter that uh, is addressed to Sam Dreddy. And uh, Scott wrote, uh, Mr. Sam Dreddy, I am about to bring a racketeer influence corrupt organization case against a few participants in the ongoing MHLP U3 trading halt saga as uh, I and MHLP shareholder. This uh, will be filed uh, in the US District Court for Vermont. In support thereof, I am seeking documents from you now with specificity under the Federal Rule of uh, Civil Procedure 27. And uh, in the next couple of paragraphs, he explains uh, the details of uh, this lawsuit and why uh, he has to ask uh, these uh, documents, but I want to pay attention on this uh, paragraph and uh, let me quote to this sentence. In fact, there are the holdings in Loper. My forthcoming litigation will ultimately challenge the very existence of FINRA as a self-regulatory organization. 
But for the moment, transparency is the issue, and it appears that broker dealer members of the U3 Halt committee you communicated with had substantial benefit of your blue sheet reviews of MMTLP in derogation of the supposed FINRA regulatory obligation to protect small investors. In essence, it appears you supplied uh, what amounted uh, to insider trading information to industry, heavyweights, uh, and uh, you did not uh, take uh, measures incumbent upon your position as a senior vice president of the National Cause and Financial Crimes Detection Program to even evaluate the counterparty status of those in receipt uh, of uh, your bullshit data as uh, transmitted through Vice President of Market Operation Patricia Casimates. One would uh, think uh, from the subsequent actions of the U3 Halt Committee that the data supplied lead them to shut down trading in MMTLP to protect their own corporate interests. Therefore, I am requesting in either Microsoft uh, documents, uh, XLS, PDF or JPEG format uh, any and all blue sheet data showing on trending to show total long positions sold in MMTLP total short position sold in MMTLP, and to do so using uh, any and all available records from broker-dealers. Apparently, there was uh, 105 uh, that received shares from DTCC in MMTLP that were available to you as identified by your December 5, 2023 email referencing SANG. Furthermore, I wish to have an affidavit of completeness attached or a summary affidavit under oath attesting uh, to uh, your compliance with this request under pain of perjury uh, per the US Federal Code of Civil Procedure. As you are familiar with this data and uh, its uh, obtainment to myself will greatly simplify legal issues uh, and expenses, which I have a duty to minimize for all parties. I would expect this request to be honored no later than July 19th of uh, this year. Thank you for your time, Scott Roth, Stafford, Vermont. And guys, we have a clear deadline that uh, will happen basically within the next uh, uh, six days. And uh, I have to admit that uh, it is extremely important uh, to see the reaction of uh, Sam Dreddy in regards to this letter, because it is the official letter that uh, is uh, pretty much a predecessor of uh, the RICO lawsuit. And guys, uh, take a look right here. Why we know that everything uh, happened uh, and we, uh, why we know that uh, all the blue sheets uh, were made uh, uh, by authorities back in 2022. Let me show you this. Uh, Rare DD published this and Scott Todd, by the way, reposted this tweet. Reminder. Just six months before FINRA began to bullshit MMT, MMTLP and MMAT, a news release from FINRA noted that, and uh, here's the direct speech, uh, FINRA and the SEC regularly request bullshits to assist in the investigation of market manipulation and insider trading. Federal securities laws and FINRA rules require firms to provide this information to FINRA, the SEC and other regulators electronically upon request. Blue sheets provide to regulators which critical detailed information about securities, transactions, including the security, trade data, price, share quantity, customer name, and uh, whether it was uh, a buy, sell, or short sale. Uh, then, effective vice president and FINRA's head of enforcement, Jessica Hopper, had this to say. Again, uh, here is her direct speech. Incomplete and inaccurate blue sheet information in response to a regulatory request compromises our ability to identify individuals engaging in insider trading schemes, market manipulation and other fraudulent activity, ultimately interfering with our ability to protect investors, said Jessica Hopper, executive vice president and FINRA's head of enforcement. Why would FINRA be so secretive with uh, what they found? Isn't it strange that they proceeded uh, with uh, posting the first MMTLP corporate action the following day? after beginning a fraud investigation. Isn't it also strange that Jessica Hopper left FINRA just before they released their first MMTLP FAQ? And uh, guys, uh, all the documents are in here, all the screenshots that uh, pretty much uh, proves uh, these statements and uh, that uh, raises even more questions to uh, authorities are right here. On top of that, guys, uh, 
Uh, why do we know that uh, these documents that was collected by FINRA and SEC, why uh, these documents are still there? Why uh, we uh, cannot assume that uh, these uh, documents were deleted? Let me show you. If you ask uh, Google how long does FINRA keep blue sheets records, you will have several uh, documents. One of them is right here. It is a book and records on uh, FINRA's official website. And here you can see that um, uh, in addition, FINRA Rule 4511 requires firms uh, to preserve for a period of at least uh, six years those FINRA books and records for which there is no specified retention period under the FINRA rules or applicable Exchange Act rules. And let me show you this uh, uh, de several details. Uh, we are on the official document. Let me show you where we are now. Uh, it is the SEC Rule 17A-3 and FINRA Records Retention Requirements uh, Explanation. And uh, if you try to find uh, 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 the word 6 in here, you will have uh, basically <laughs> 6 uh, results. And uh, the very last result uh, will lead you to this uh, table. And uh, in general, uh, the retention period for uh, records uh, should be longer than 3 years. So, we know for sure that at least uh, for three years all the broker-dealers and uh, FINRA and SEC have uh, to store this information. And that is why blue sheets are still there. But uh, in the majority of other cases we have even longer period uh, or longer retention periods uh, for these records. And that is why we know that these records are still there. On top of that, guys, take a look right here. Uh, somewhere here. Uh, Scott Trott uh, wrote this tweet 18 hours ago and Curtis reposted it. Uh, 80, 98 undisclosed of uh, 105 broker, broker dealers identified by DTCC in MMTLP. South Korean regulators are in the hunt. Our dogs uh, can hunt too. Look at these companies uh, uttered by Huang, then look at the, the last uh, on the list. Implicated in MMTLP uh, treachery for falsified tender using NextBridge's name to try and get enough shares of uh, unwitting investors to cover their uh, monstrous short positions in MMTLP. Uh, here is the list of uh, list of uh, broker dealers, and here is the last one: Tiger Global. Guys, don't you familiar with this name? Yes, we know this name, and just several. Uh, days ago i showed you that tiger global uh, was the company basically which is uh, bill which belongs uh, to uh, interactive brokers and uh, back in the days uh, tiger brokers uh, uh, made a statement quite uh, interesting but in my opinion 100 uh, illegal statement of uh, buying back mmtlp shares without even uh, mmtlp uh, involvement in this uh, case and uh, this was uh, extremely suspicious on top of that, uh, Scott wrote, wrote, Anybody want to take a swag that uh, every freaking one of these was using an ATS to hide their oversold and short positions from FINRA? And that FINRA knew this. And guys, it is not the end. Uh, let me show you. Uh, let me show you first of all this uh, tweet. Uh, we are on Meta News official uh, Twitter account. And Tom Ammer reposted the tweet that was uh, written by Gary Gensler. And Gary Gensler wrote this. I think you've spotted something fishy in the market, submitted tip or compliant to the SEC. And he added the link uh, uh, to the SEC official website. And Tom M wrote, I'd like to report the SEC chair for regulation by harassment. <laughs> and on top of that, guys, another problem that happened uh, just recently is the QCIP number that uh, occasionally was the similar for another company, was the similar for TRCH and another company, Bytech Mining. And let me show you this tweet that was published by uh, Elf Carbon and that was reposted by Curtis. Uh, first of all, I want to show you the initial tweet that is basically uh, the tweet that was addressed to the Gary Gensler's tweet <laughs> about uh, the compliant. So, uh, Elf Carbon wrote, I did Gary Gensler, I did. I submitted one about uh, biotech mining illegally using the Torchlight QSIP and I know you got more than just my so-called tip. It's a very clear-cut case of fraud. 
QCIPs are only to be reused uh, in case of certain high volume fixed income programs to facilitate processing by market participant, uh, participants. Is that Torchline common uh, shares, uh, John Burda? Uh, where is the charges uh, on uh, Bytech? Instead of looking uh, into Bytech, uh, you targeted Burda and helped cover up uh, the fraud by market makers on TRCH, MMAT and MTLP. Hi, so Pierce, do you need to hire better leaders in your fraud offices? Because I'm looking into a career change and can do what uh, your current offices uh, officers do much better and with uh, far less resources and time. And uh, he also added this. Need something to do today, MHLP? Ask Gary Genser and Esther Pierce why SEC has uh, done nothing about uh, biotech mining, still in Torchlight Energy QC. QCIP Global Service has said they did not assign the QCIP to Bytech, which makes this very suspicious. Is it, re is it related to MHLP? We don't know, because they refuse to acknowledge it publicly. And guys, let me show you what did Christian Shaughnessy uh, write uh, in response uh, uh, in regards to this issue. So, again, lots of questions. Here is the first one. Why has Bytech Technologies appropriated Torchlight's QCIP 89102U103 uh, in two SEC filings. Uh, here is the numbers of these filings, MT10-Q in August of 2023 and 13D in May of 2024. That QCIP is a single user identifier that only belongs to Torchlight. And she added uh, the screenshots of the documents with the, uh, let me show you, Torchlight Energy QCIP number as you can see right here, and uh, let me show you somewhere here. Biotech Technologies Corporation, again, the same number, 89102U103. So guys, uh, we are witnessing right now, we are witnessing this illegal activity, and guys, uh, uh, for the last uh, month uh, or month and a half, uh, we achieved a lot, uh, a lot in our case. And I think uh, the next uh, recall lawsuit that will be filed uh, within next uh, a couple of uh, days, uh, in the very beginning of at the very beginning of uh, the next week, uh, this recall lawsuit will definitely help us uh, to uh, push our case forward. But at the same time, guys. We have uh, to use any possible way to the resolution, and unfortunately, we still don't have any. Let me show you. We still don't have any explanation from Representative Ralph Norman or Pete Sessions in regards to their position in our case. And uh, definitely, we have to keep an eye on uh, this issue, and we have uh, to take a closer look uh, on any other possible ways to the resolution. And to do so, guys, just subscribe to my channel and uh, watch my daily updates. And guys, let me tell you my personal story. I have a wife and two children aged 11 and uh, 15, as well as a small dog. After 30 years of living in Russia near the Baikal Lake, we decided to move. Now we reside in Serbia. Although I don't own any MMTLP shares, I invest a lot of time creating daily MMTLP videos. I have been doing this every day without days off and holidays for more than one and a half years. Now I wish to buy back this time from my family, from my children. We've agreed that I will ask the MHLP community to support me and I will give all the money to the children. Therefore, if you believe that I am providing useful content for you and uh, wish to support me, you can join my Patreon account. For $5 a month, I will add your name to my list of supporters if you wish. Thank you in advance. The link you can find in the description below. So, I think that's all information that I want to provide you. If you like my video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And see you guys and girls next time. Bye! I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack. Born a rock star in this life, gone live it up on the attack. Baby.